All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. Thanks for coming uh, to Redux Modeling State. So my name is Jesse Sanders. I'm the CEO of Rebug. And today we're going to talk about Redux and modeling state and some of the things that you want to watch out for and uh, some of the new recommendations that are coming out. So what we want to talk about today is, you know, what kind of data should we be storing in, in Redux state? We've heard some other speakers talk about, you know, we're, we're using a little bit too much. And um, they're definitely right. We've got some duplicated data going on. And there's definitely some issues. So let's talk about some rules of thumb here. We want to store data that's shared within different parts of the application. That's a pretty no-brainer. Um, and we also want to um, put data in the store that is used by multiple components. So a lot of times we'll have the same data that's being displayed in multiple places. It might look slightly different. Um, but um, we want to go ahead and put that in the store so we only have to go get it from one source. Um, another concept here is, is new data um, when we pull data into the application, sometimes we need to go ahead and morph it and change it using selectors. And we'll talk about selectors here in a minute. Um, so that's a good candidate. Um, also, if we need to, to restore state or be able to go backwards and forward in state, that's another really good candidate for putting data into the store. And then lastly, data that needs to be cached. So we'll talk about the caching mechanisms that are um, available to you with some of the new libraries and uh, how you can take advantage of that as well. So types of data, really um, there's uh, three major categories for types of data that we're going to talk about today that you're going to want to put into your store. Um, the first one is domain data. This is the one that's uh, we're very com you know um, we're very familiar with. This is uh, any sort of data that we're going to uh, display, we're going to manipulate it, or we're going to modify it. And this could be uh, like a great example as we're loading a list of uh, to dos uh, from our API server, right? So in um, the other one is application state. So this is anything that would be specific to the application behavior. So this might be an authenticated user. This might be what's the selected uh, um, ID of something. You know, some sort of state data uh, that, that's specific to the application that's not necessarily anything to do with the, the do uh, domain data. Um, example here, we've got our to-do items again, and items five and eight are selected. So we need to be able to store that um, off into the app state so that we, if we uh, recreate our, our, our state again, that we'd be able to get those selected. Um, another example of this is anytime we're fetching data, uh, we might want to then have a uh, variable then to say, hey, we're loading, um, or no, we're now uh, we're done loading. So then the other one is UI state. So UI state, uh, a really good example here is talking about, um, let's say we have a sidebar. Is it open? Is it closed? Anything that's specific to the UI state so we, we can we recreate what the UI was um, at that last moment. So we, those are uh, the major three categories that we want to store into the, uh, um, into the store. So when we organize the state in the store, um, we want to avoid defining um, what we're putting in there based on what, where it is in the UI. So to give you an example here, um, we, we, want to, uh, we want to define the shape in terms of the domain data. So what's the different types of domains that we're bringing in versus um, where is it actually located at? So here's a really good example here. Very generic. We've got domain data. We've got app state data. and We've got UI data. But we're not nesting it inside of it. So um, one of the really common mistakes here is that I, I, may, I may go back over here in my UI, I would, I would then say I've got my left, side, uh, left uh, nav bar and then I've got my to-do list um, and here's my to-dos and I've got this data that's nested in there. That's definitely a no-no, you don't want to do that. Um, so really what we want to do is normalize the data. We want to treat um, this sort of data here this is a very common uh, scenario. This might be something that we get back from a, an API server here. And you can see we've got an ID, we've got an author, a body, and we've got nested comments in here. And then within that, we've got an author, and uh, we've got the same author in two different places. So this is starts to become an issue here. Uh, you, you may not see it initially, but now when we start to update these, this can um, cause problems. So this data structure is complex. It's more complex than it needs to be. And, and as I said here, we've got data that's repeating. Um, and uh, we'll talk about here why this is a problem. So duplicated data is difficult to update. 
We'll take a look at a, a code example here. So we're going to kind of move through these slides fairly quickly and talk about things at the 50,000 foot level. And then we're going to dig into some code and look at some real examples and talk about um, how, we, how we manage this and some of the new uh, libraries that are available to help you out with that. So the duplicated data is difficult to update. Um, nested data increases the complexity of our reducers. And I'll show you an example of that and actually show you um, how easy it is to start corrupting your state, even though you think you're doing it right. Um, and the other thing is, is that it may cause unnecessary rendering. So if we go back over here and we look at this state, when I add another comment here and, and I store these blog posts um, into my store, when I add a new comment, I'm going to re-render all the comments and the, and the post itself. So now I'm, I'm, I'm forcing the UI to, to update all over again unnecessarily. So we, these are things that we want to avoid. So how do we do this? We want to start treating our, our store like a database. We want to normalize our data. We want to reduce and eliminate any sort of duplicated data. So each data type or each type of data gets its own table. So if we go back to our previous example where we have a post and we got comments, and we have users that are authors. We're going to want to give them each their own. Posts, comments, users. Very simple here. We want to, we want to take our data and break it apart and, and reduce the, uh, actually eliminate in, any sort of duplication. It's going to make it a lot easier. Now if we go ahead and update one of our authors, I don't have to go find all, you know, the 15 different spots that I've accidentally added authors to the store, and I've got to find those and get them all synchronized. So each table is an object. And, and uh, so we're going from the, the concept of an array data, and we're going to change over to a dictionary. We're going to have a single object where each one of the, uh, the keys is my ID. That's my unique identifier for this object. And then my value is going to be my actual object. So you can see here we've got posts. And we'll talk about this, this structure here in a second, but now we've actually introduced a new thing called entities. And inside of entities, post one would be the ID. Post two would be an ID, and then the related objects that, that those are associated to. So, and then we have another um, property that we're going to introduce to this object, because we need to understand what is the order. What is the natural order of these objects? Um, and what are all the IDs that we have available uh, to us uh, within this dictionary? So we're going to have two properties um, on our new object that we're going to put into our store. Entities and IDs. IDs is an array. And the entities is a dictionary. So you can see here, we've got posts, we've got our entities, we've got our two IDs, and then those IDs are then also replicated down below in our IDs uh, string array. Um, related items are referenced by ID. So we no longer want to have nested data. We, no, we want to now treat this again like a database. We're going to start to make some referential, well we won't really have referential integrity, but more of a referential honesty if you will. We're, we're going to start putting our data in and then relating um, items by those IDs. So in this case here, we've changed our posts with our author from being an object and now we're just storing the key of that. And then over here we've got our users um, object over here with their entities. And uh, here's the key that we're pointing to, uh, user1. And that points back up on the post user1. So where does this come from? How do we do this? This looks like a lot of new work. Like now I'm going to have to take an array and every time I load it down, I've got to now morph it from array data over to dictionary data, create the IDs and, well, this seems like a, a lot of work and I, I don't know if I'm really going to be able to maintain this. Well, the NGRX team uh, took a look at this and decided to go ahead and get ahead of this and start building out um, objects that would support you in this. And by the way, this actually doesn't just come from the NGRX team. This actually comes from the uh, Redux JS org. So their spec is to start to normalize data, and we stop, you know, um, duplicating data and nesting data. And the NGRX team has adopted this. 
So the first object that we're going to talk about is the adapter. So the adapter here is really the, the, the heavy lifter. It does all the real work. Um, it provides uh, methods to allow us to maintain our collections. So what kind of methods do we get? Well, we get a bunch of instance methods like we can add, we can remove, and we can update. So this makes it really simple now to be able to uh, maintain these collections. And also, when we, when, so let's say we, we, we load some new data in. I want to go ahead and say uh, add many or add all with my action payload that has, an array, that has array data that's come down from the server. It will automatically, when I, when I use the uh, add all, it will go ahead and take those and add them to the dictionary and also update the list of IDs. So I don't have to do any of this mapping myself. It's all built in uh, to the adapter. So the adapter needs one really key piece here, which is the entity state. So the entity state interface here, um, this guarantees us that we're going to have IDs and we're going to have entities. So the IDs, again, what, like I said, we've got a string um, array. It also actually supports number array as well. Uh, so that's been a, a very recent addition in the last uh, week or so. And then what we have here under entities uh, kind of got a little different um, uh, declaration here. But basically what it's saying is um, we're passing in our type. So let's say in our case here it's posts. So we're going to pass in our type of post. And our entities is going to be a post. But it's saying, OK, the ID is going to be a string uh, for the key. And then the value is going to be uh, of our type, right? So in this case here, let's, let's take a look at a real example. Um, here I've got a interface, or, or really just a model, right? I've got an interface for user. Um, it's got two simple properties. We've got an ID and a name on it, right? And then over here, we're going to go ahead and create a new interface called state that extends entity state, and we're going to go ahead and pass it our user interface. Now, the other thing that we can do here is that we can extend um, the properties of our user. So we can actually add an additional property here. So in our case here, a really good example um, is selected user ID. So a couple of days ago, or actually yesterday, Sergio was talking about we we're taking um, debt data and we're putting it into our store. Well, we don't want to have that, that, that uh, data duplicated, but we could store off the ID for what is the selected item. So this is a really easy way that we can go ahead and, and um, add that ID to it, and then we can maintain that with our reducer. All right, so then we've got our entity adapter. So here, um, we're creating a, a new adapter. Um, it's going to be of type entity adapter, and we're passing it our user type. That's our model again. And, and we're using this new um, uh, function here called create entity adapter. So this is going to go ahead and, and using the uh, um, our user object, or our interface, it's going to go ahead and create a new um, um, adapter, which now is going to have all those static methods for us to be able to maintain our collections. And it takes a look at um, the uh, user interface and then uh, determines from there. There's actually a couple of parameters you can pass in here as well, which we'll talk about. Uh, one is we can tell it what the select ID is. So if our user doesn't have an ID property on it directly, but it's got a, some other um, name for that unique identifier, we wouldn't specify it there. And then uh, the other one is we can do a compare. Um, typically, we'll usually set this to false. It is a performance hit if you need to do it, but you can pass in a compare function um, uh, to the uh, create entity adapter, and then it'll go ahead and sort those keys in order. All right, so why should we care about this? Well, the, really the big deal, deal here is selectors. Selectors are, um, if the store is like a database, then selectors are like a query. And what's, what's great about the selectors is they're composable and uh, they're memoized. So we talked about being able to cache, right? That was some, one of the things we talked about, the advantage of doing this. So one of the, the uh, advantages that we get here with selectors is they are memoized and they are cached. So if we have a, a, uh, a selector that does a lot of calculations and is pulling a lot of data in from different places uh, within the store to create some new, new piece of data, as long as we pass in those same uh, tokens back in, the same exact, you know, same parameters for that, it's actually going to use the cached uh, version of that, and we don't have to pay that price again locally. So <clears throat> the two features here, or the two um, 
uh, methods here that are available on the store, and these actually already exist on the store, is the create selector and the create feature selector. So in our case here, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, import those. So you can see we're just getting them from NGX, uh, NGRX store. And then uh, we're creating an interface called feature state. Um, and we've got our uh, interface app state, which feature, uh, feature state. And then um, we're creating a new select to, to select our feature and uh, passing in the app state to that and just grabbing the feature off of it. So pretty simple, be able to select a root property um, off of that. We'll take a look at it at, at a little bit uh, better example here in just a second. Um, then we can compose multiple selectors. So it's great, like, hey, I, I was able to select the root, but that's not all that powerful, right? I'm going to usually need to do a little bit more than just get the root. So they're composable, so in this case here, um, I can use the create selector and then I can go ahead and use the previous select feature, and then I can, um, off of that, uh, the, off the object that it returns, um, I can now compose these together, get that, and then ask for the counter uh, property off of that. So you can see I can start to compose these, um, and, and it's, it's really simple to be able to have these three or four levels deep of, of selectors that are all chained together to get down to the data that I want, uh, versus having to rewrite those every single time and duplicate that kind of functionality. So let's talk about this uh, a little bit more. This is uh, a little bit better example. So here we've got a, um, an object called state, and um, inside of it's got uh, an items, and we've got uh, an apple and an orange. We've got a, um, let's say that's a price, you know, associated to it. So the first thing we do is we're gonna create our first selector, uh, which is just gonna get the items. Um, we're gonna pass it in the state, and we're gonna ask for the items property off of that. And then we're going to create, use the create selector to say, use the select items to first go get me the items uh, array. And then we're going to use, um, uh, from there, we're going to use the reduce function on that array um, and then be able to um, add those together. And then the zero on the end there, that's our beginning value. So um, when we call this at the very end here, now we have select total with state, um, and we get $2.15, assuming that was a a price. Great, so how do we actually do this within one of our components? This is a great example, but you know, it's, we're not really showing how to use it in a component yet. So now we're gonna go ahead and import our select total um, from our reducers feature. And you can see down here on the constructor, um, inside of there, we're gonna use our store select using the select total and we can go ahead and apply uh, that to our local variable for this, uh, this dot total. And then that would go ahead and get rendered in our template. So you can see, by looking at what we have back here, we're able to compose these together, simplify what we're doing um, in terms of selectors, and uh, be able to call it with a single method like that, uh, using that selector right there. All right, so that's most of the slides that we want to talk about. The uh, A lot of this content is coming from what I referenced earlier, is the Redux.js org. So this here is a great article on normalizing uh, state shape. It's talking about the exact sort of scenario here where we've got nested data and then how we want to go ahead and, and uh, reduce that or actually eliminate that nesting and, and create a normalized database. So that's a great read to understand on that. Um, the, uh, if we go look at it, the uh, NGRX platform, that's where the new entity library is at. And when you go to npm install it, it doesn't exist. So this is brand new. This is, has not even been released yet. Um, the, the only way you can actually get it onto your machine is using Yarn. Um, there, is, there are some, uh, there's an issue on this actually where you, uh, they're talking about how to get it to work with GitHub, but uh, uh, it's not working to, to uh, bring that down. So actually in my case, I had to use Yarn to do so. <clears throat> All right, so what we want to do here is dig into a little bit of code. So it's great that we've talked about the 50,000 foot level. We now understand that we've got entity state and we got our entity adapter, but how do I in a real world actually use this? Well, one of the things you can do is you can go out, um, if we come back over here and you go out to the uh, NGRX platform, um, there's some great code in here under the example app and you can dig in and take a look at books and uh, here's the reducers. And you can see how they're doing it here. But it's, it was a little too complex to walk people through. 
because there's a lot of stuff going on. So what I elected to do here is create a really small sample app that uh, use posts and comments so we can take a look at um, how that's currently written, like most of the examples that you'll find, and now how do we go ahead and convert that over to uh, the uh, entity adapter. Does that sound like a good idea? All right, great. All right, so in our case here, let me just make sure we're on the the right branch. So um, I'll make all this code available. Also, we'll make the slides available, and uh, we'll, we'll get that posted so uh, everybody can get to this and have a, uh, an example that they can work with. So in this case here, I'm going to switch back over. Oh, you want to, yeah, let's increase that a little bit. How's that? It's getting a little better. Let me... Uh, Reduce the size on this side and get rid of that. How's that? Is that better? You guys see it in the back? All right, excellent. Okay, so <coughs> let's talk about uh, what we have here. So very, very simple. We've got our DB JSON. So what I want to do is I don't want to have to create, <laughs> create a service and, and do a whole bunch of work to, to get this back end working. So I actually have two terminals running here and I'm using JSON server to, to serve up a back end. In this case here, I have what I would consider bad data. So uh, instead of attempting to um, show how I could uh, poorly store it into the, uh, the store, what I want to show is sometimes with our APIs, we don't get perfect data down. So in this case here, I've got, um, for our JSON uh, data, I've got posts and I've got comments already nested inside of it. So your API may come this way. You may be getting, when you're making calls to go get your data, you might be getting nested data from day, you know, from moment one. Or the other common scenario is it's not nested, but I decide to nest it. I decide that, hey, here's the post, and I'm going to go ahead and attach the comments, you know, to that data, and we're starting to create that nested data. So we're going to start to look at the, the bad way, and then we're going to look at how we're going to fix this and, and convert it. So there's the back end. Um, on the front end here, pretty simple. Let's take a look at some actions. So I'm using the, the abbreviated way of writing these uh, for actions. I find this a lot cleaner instead of um, um, having to, to create an object every single time and, and uh, set the type and, and then what's, the, what's the, I forget what's the payload what for this one. No, instead I create a, um, an export a class for each one of these. So in our case here, um, we have a load post. You see right here, and our load posts uh, implements the action, and it's of type load posts. Uh, it, it has no uh, payload. On our success, we get a payload uh, coming back of posts. This would handle our error, so on and so forth. So this is pretty standard stuff um, as we're starting to see that we're moving away from uh, declaring actions, <coughs> um, just using constants only and starting to use classes. And at the bottom here, um, I'm exporting a type. Uh, called all, and then I, I uh, list all the methods that I'm making available, or I'm sorry, all the classes that are available here for the different actions. So that's pretty simple, nothing, nothing too uh, outlandish there. And then on the reducers, this is pretty much the standard way that, that uh, most examples you're going to see out on the web is how to handle reducers. So what we're doing here is we're dealing with array data, and I know this because everything we're doing is wrapping with an array. So probably the, the one that I want you to, to notice the most is load post success. So in this case here, we're going to have a payload of, of posts that are coming back down. And, and we're going to go ahead and um, uh, uh, spread state. And then we're going to spread the payload. And we're going to create a new uh, array out of that, right? So pretty simple. Um, and then we're doing the same for you know, how post fail works. And then over here, we got our add comment. Now notice if we look at add comment, what do you guys notice first? It's a lot more complicated. Why is that? It's because I have nested data. Now I have to, to deal with, okay, I need to take my state, I need to map it, and if the post ID equals the action ID, then I need to remap my comments and uh, return the comment, otherwise I'm gonna concat with the payload, all this craziness going on, right? And, and as I was working on this and kind of playing around with it, what I realized is that without even knowing it, I was corrupting my state. Because now I'm dealing with multiple uh, arrays and we got nested, we got an outer object, 
with an inner array, and, and it's really simple to start making big mistakes that you may not really catch until later when, you, when, when you're debugging. You're like, wow, this is kind of odd. I don't really understand what's going on here. I'm getting some really uh, une unexpected effects here, side effects to my application, and I don't know why. So uh, in this case here, this, this, this actually does uh, very thoroughly, uh, oh, actually, the, the return post on the bottom here, this is, uh, um, oh, actually, that is correct. That's inside of the loop there. Um, but this actually ends up corrupting my state. And I want to go ahead and leave this in here and show you how easy it is uh, to do this, even though this code actually looks pretty legit, should, should work, right? Seems reasonable, but it doesn't. So from here, um, we'll take a look at our component really quick. Um, here we're actually just getting our store and, and with our app state. Um, actually, we want to look at containers first. All right, so here we have our, our uh, container. This is really our page. Um, so this is our smart component. And we're going to go ahead and, and use the, uh, the store. We're going to select posts. And we're going to assign this to an observable uh, with a, a type of post array, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dispatch uh, post actions, load posts. We want to go load all posts, right? Um, so who, who understands effects? Who's been working with effects? Anybody? All right, a few. So let's go take a look at the effect here really quick. So effects are just used for anything that's asynchronous. So if I need to make a call out to an API or I've got uh, anything that's going to be uh, returning data asynchronously, you really need to put that into an effect. So over here, um, I've got my load all posts. And I'm checking to make sure this is looking at my action type. Great, I've got the right one. And then here I'm, I've uh, imported my post service. So post service is really simple. We'll just take a quick gander over here. You can see that there's no magic going on. But here's our load all. <coughs> our load all here uh, is just using our standard HTTP client. We're, we're making a get call to go get our post. And then uh, we're mapping the response uh, to get the JSON out of it, right? Pretty simple. And then over, back over here on the effect, um, when, this, when this action is fired or dispatched, then I want to go ahead and call the, uh, let's go ahead and scoot this over so I don't have to go back and forth. Um, Let's see, once this, uh, this observable resol resolves, then I want to get the posts, and I want to go ahead and uh, have those returned in a load uh, post success, and I'm going to pass those posts in, right? So now this is what's going to have my reducer go ahead and pick this back up. Does that make sense, everybody? Any, any questions on that? All right. So i got to get my, my other window back. How do I do that? There we go. Um, all right, so we'll go look at our reducer again really quick. Um, it's going to come in here. Again, we're going to basically, we're going to take our existing array, we're going to spread it, we're going to take our new array, we're going to spread it, and we're going to put them together, right? So that's a fairly standard way uh, of doing um, our reducers. So now let's go, let's take a look at the sample app really quick and just show you what it does. There's, there's really not uh, a whole lot of magic going on here. But, uh, so my blog post, how NGRX adapter saved me time. Uh, so a couple of comments from Joe User. Anybody know who Jimmy Walker is? No, one, one, all right. Dynamite, all right. Um, so really simple here. I can go ahead and, uh, this is a, a new comment, and I can go ahead and, and add it. Um, you can't even tell that it's corrupting state. It looks great. Um, so, and that's the tricky part with it. So if we, if we want to take a look at that really quick here, see if I can get this big enough where you guys can see it. Uh, let me put it on the bottom here. Oh, we're going to go that route. Um, and here... We're going to look at our, our state and look at it raw. So even though we have our load post success over here, somehow this one got corrupted and has my, this is a new comment. <laughs> so again, the, the, the really the point of this is that updating nested data is tough. It's really easy to get things messed up, and there's a lot easier way to do it. So instead of going into this too much, we're going to go... Uh, 
back a different direction and we're going to take a look at, um, here we go, what it looks like to convert this. So I'm going to pull back up our console. In our case here, I'm going to need to stop this and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to stop our backend server. Uh, and I'm going to get checkout refactor. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to restart this back up and I am going to restart our API. So one of the things when I was doing this and I was building this, this demo is something in the back of my head said, you know what, this entity state is going to be the silver bullet. It's going to do a whole bunch of really cool stuff for me. It's going to fix everything. It's going to know how, like if I, I think, man, if I take and, and I create my, my, uh, my model my, for my app state and I, and I tell it about the comment, and then I have a comment store that I set up with its entity state that it'll somehow map this stuff for me and make this all work really nice. Well, unfortunately, that, that doesn't happen. None of that code is there. And it really doesn't belong there either, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> it's not opinionated. It's not, it's not here to fix your data problems. So if, you're, if you are getting data that's mucked and you've got nested stuff, you're going to need to handle that on your own and break that apart. Um, and, and work with some of those IDs. Hopefully you can go back to your API designers and say, hey, really don't need this whole massive thing. Could we just get it down and, and uh, work like a, a normal REST service? Um, sometimes that's possible, sometimes it's not. Um, so in this case here, what I wanted to do is just make it really, oh, cancel. Um, I wanted to make it really simple to, 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 to look at this. So I went ahead and just changed our, um, let's get rid of this out of the way. I went ahead and changed our data here for our uh, DB JSON and broke it out so I have posts and I have comments and then uh, so we got our, our, our comments over here separate. I think at one point I had authors but I went ahead and removed that just to make this simple. Okay, So I re-fired re this back up and we should have, let's just make sure we're still up and running. Great, this looks good and all right. So if we come back over here to actions, they look exactly the same. We didn't have to change anything on the actions. The only thing I did do here is that I removed the add comment because it doesn't belong to the post. And I went ahead and, and put that over here in the comments area. And for its actions, I had the add comment moved over to here where it belongs. <coughs> All right, and then um, come back over here. So our reducer actually changed quite a bit. So the first thing I want you to notice is um, we're loading posts. Actually, let's, let's look at the load post success. That's probably the, the, the best one here to look at. So in this case here, I've got load post success, and I'm returning a spread of the adapter add mini. I'm taking my payload and, and putting that in with my state. So notice I'm not surrounded by square brackets. I'm not putting this back into an array. This is going to create my dictionary for me. So now I don't, I don't have to worry about all the um, how do I convert this into a dictionary. But actually there's a few steps above here that we, we need to take a look at. So one of the things I did here is I went ahead and pulled in a few of these libraries from uh, NGRX Entity. Again, at this point I had to use Yarn to get that pulled in. Um, this should be released very shortly. Um, but you can start to, to work with it uh, before it gets released. So I'm pulling an entity state, I'm pulling an entity adapter, and the create method, right? So here, um, I've went ahead and I'm exporting my interface for app state. This actually probably belongs somewhere else, but for the purpose of a demo, I put it here so it's right next to everything else so we can see stuff. Um, we're going to, our next line here on 18 is we are exporting an interface uh, called state that extends entity state and we're passing it our type of post. So post is coming from our model, very simple there. And the next thing that we're doing is we are creating our entity adapter um, using the uh, post interface and using the create entity adapter method uh, that we imported. So remember I told you you could specify your ID and you could specify your uh, sort compare. 
So in this case here, uh, sort compare actually defaults to false, so I can actually just eliminate that. I don't need it to be there, but I, uh, it's contained here, so you can see like how would I use it. Um, so it doesn't take true, by the way. That that would actually not do much for you. Um, if you are if you're not going to pass false to it, then you want to go ahead and pass a, a function to it, or just not include it at all. So that sort um, the, the sort function then would use a, a standard comparer and and uh, you'd be able to sort it as you need. So the select ID here, we give it our type, and we just tell it, hey, this is, this is the property we want to use. So pretty simple there. The other thing that, that it does, uh, the adapter gives us, is a method called get initial state. So instead of having to declare, you know, that the state equals uh, an empty array of, of posts, we don't have to do any of that. It'll actually go ahead and do this for us. And again, remember, we could come in over here and add additional properties and say, you know, my selected uh, post ID is a number and, and whatnot. Obviously, there's a little issue there, but um, I could go ahead and add additional properties to this very easily. And then those that also uh, get set in the initial state, uh, we'd be able to then maintain them in the reducer. So. Again, the, really the biggest change here is now we're using our add mini. This is going to go ahead and create our dictionary for us. And, and uh, any of the items coming back from um, the, the data over here in dbjson, now we're going to have an object that has a property, a key, a property value or a key, a key of one and with the uh, object here as its value. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. All right, so we've talked about our actions for posts, we've talked about our, uh, our reducers. Let's talk about our selectors. So selectors often um, are being placed into the reducers folder, um, and, and a really common spot for this is you can put them in the index uh, um, file here. It doesn't really matter, of course, you can put them anywhere that you want. Um, and in this case here, we're creating um, a series of selectors based off the uh, adapters, uh, adapter get selectors using the select post state. Um, so this is actually using the app state state um, posts. So this is getting it from the store. Um, and then this, this uh, maps um, each one of these to the uh, given um, uh, selectors there that, that come with the adapter. So we've got our selectors now. They're pretty simple. We'll take a look at um, one that's a little more complicated here in a second for comments. So really for our selectors, the only one that we're interested in here is we would just want to get select all. Because here's the thing that you need to realize. When the data is being stored, it's being stored in the store as a dictionary, right? Under entities. But when we, when we go to use it, what do we need it as? We need it back as an array so that we can iterate over it and we can display all of our posts. And, and so that's actually what the uh, select post entities does, uh, which I believe then comes from the adapter. Um, all right. The effects. Let's talk about this really quick. So for the purpose of this demo here, um, we're actually just going to go load all posts and we're just going to go load all comments. Ideally, what we'd be doing is we'd be loading a single post by ID. We'd be using that ID to then just load the comments that we want. Um, but we didn't make it. So uh, in this case here, uh, just more of a simple example. Um, but this is something that, that was talked about yesterday a little bit, which is using a splitter action as an event to load posts and comments. So here we're using the flat map and uh, we're gonna go ahead and use, uh, we're gonna do our post actions load posts and our comment actions load comments all based off the post actions load posts and comments, right? So this is a little tidbit that from yesterday, I figured I'd just toss it in here into the, the code and it worked just beautifully. We were able to fire up and go. All right, so now we've got our, our effect. Um, th this part of the effect did not change at all. Uh, we're still loading data the same exact way. We're going to go load all of our posts. Um, over on the comment side, what we've done is we've created an effect over here. Um, and we're just doing our load all. And anytime we get the load comments, we're calling the comment service load all. And we're just passing those in to the load comment success. Again, over here on the reducers, we went ahead and did pretty much the same uh, exact thing. We create a new app state for comments. Um, we create our entity state, uh, passing in the, uh, the comment model. 
And uh, then we're creating our entity adapter as well. From there, when we have our um, load comment success, we're using our add mini and we're passing that uh, payload in with the state. So the, what, what's the, the, the one thing that jumps out to me here is, is how beautiful add comment is now. This is a lot easier to test. This is a lot easier to work with versus um, what we had before where we're doing nested mapping and, and we're actually corrupting our state. So let's take a look at how this actually works over here. So I'm going to go add, uh, this is a new comment. Click add comment. So that went ahead and went. Now let's see, did we corrupt our state this time? So over here, notice what we've got going on. First, our, our first action was, oh, you probably can't see that, right? Let's see here. Can we see that in the back? All right. So first we, we're doing load posts and comments, and uh, nothing came out of that. So we were talking about this yesterday with events, uh, event type of, of actions. They, they typically don't have an output. They're really just triggering off other actions, right? So now uh, it, it caused the uh, load posts to go ahead and fire and also the load comments to go ahead and fire. There's, uh, there's no state that, uh, that, uh, that actually comes out of these, but you can see that, that here's, our, here's our overall raw state right now. Um, and this was actually created by what? Did anybody have an idea? The what? The adapter, yes. Absolutely. Come see me. I'll get you a t-shirt at the end. Um, let's see here. So then the next thing that happens is we have our success action. So we have our load posts. So our posts load in. Notice our comments is still blank. And over here, the load comments happen. And uh, those have been updated as well now. Now we have those comments in. So... Really, the, the real test here is when we, when we clicked our uh, add comment, did we corrupt our state? And you see here, we did not. So it didn't affect the, the prior, the, any of the prior states above it. Um, it went ahead and added it uh, correctly. Um, you can see our diff here is, is just this, this part right here. Oh, it also updated our IDs. It looks like we might... Oh, no. Okay. So this is the IDs that's passing in. Um, let's go back to our state itself. Where's the IDs at? Oh, so here's our IDs here. So we've got ID 1, ID 100, and ID 2. So notice I didn't have to do anything special. I didn't have to go out and, and uh, mess with the dictionary at all um, to get these in there. They're, they're automatically just added, and we're going from array data to our dictionary data. All right, so the last part here I want to show you is, okay, great. We looked at a selector for um, what we're doing with the posts. And we'll look at the uh, quick example of it again over here. Here's the container component. And our select is we're just selecting all posts, right? So that's not a whole lot of magic happening there. Um, <clears throat> but on the comments, we'd only want to select, if let's say we had our, our comment store, and we've been adding comments to that, lo that, uh, that local store, then we only want to get the comments for this exact post, right? So in a case here, let's go look at the components, and I believe it's... That's actually getting passed in. Um, oh, it's over here on our, on our post. So um, our post here... Uh, post component has a uh, property called comments, which is an observer that points to the comments array. And we're going to go ahead and use this uh, comment selector select by post ID. So again, this is a composable selector. If we go take a look at the, the definition on this, we're going to see that I, I hard coded it. So bad, not good, don't, don't do this. Uh, but for the purpose of this uh, demo, it's uh, just there to kind of show how we'd put this together. So first thing it's doing is it's selecting all comments. So select all comments again is coming out of the adapter. And um, what, what that's doing actually is it's getting the entities and it's getting a list of the IDs and it's mapping um, the uh, entities um, using that ID and, and creating a new array. So we're going from our dictionary to our array. So once I have that array, now I want to just filter it down based off of the post ID. Again, the, the, the benefit here is that these are all cached 
I don't, I don't pay the price for uh, heavy calculations. It's going to happen one time. You know, of course, if the data changes or if we change the parameters, then we're going to have to pay that price again. But uh, until that happens, we get that benefit. All right. So I think we've got about uh, four or five minutes left here. Um, that is pretty much everything in the presentation. Any, any uh, questions?